me and they realize, people realize that I'm a foreigner, foreign born. And uh, obviously I've been in the States long enough that I know English fairly well, not completely. And uh, they, the next question is, when did you come to the United States? And I answer, well, you really don't want to know that yet. First you have to ask me, when did I leave Czechoslovakia? And that was in 1939. My parents lived in Stab, which is a small city, 20 kilometers out of, uh, south of Pil uh, north of Pilsen, excuse me. And um, in the Sudetenland, which is a German, uh, the little town was about 90% German and little sprinkling of Czech families here and there. Uh, I don't quite know where we fitted in. My father always spoke German. My mother always spoke Czech. We, both my brother and I, grew up knowing the two languages, not realizing there were different languages. Because we talked to father in German and to mother in Czech. And uh, the two, two of them, they, they spoke German to each other quite often. But my father wasn't too sure about the Czech language. He, was not, he had all German schools because there were no Czech schools in that little town. My brother started in German school. I, my parents opted to found a three-class, five-year school, grammar school in that little town. And uh, I was the first child that went to a Czech school of, of our side of the family. Uh, the, the, the mayor of the town comes to my father, they knew each other very well, and said to him, but Mr. Saltz, you cannot do that to, to do that to us. Send your boy into a Czech school. He was very perturbed. Uh, we didn't hide our, our religious uh, upbringing. Uh, we went, used to go to a synagogue in the little town. Um, but uh, there wasn't a single instance of uh, racial problems. So it's, uh, I think we were accepted. The town doctor, his family were Jewish. And um, when they were supposed to leave the country, leave the area, or be uh, dragged into Germany, and they committed suicide. Mm. That I remember. But um, uh, the original Czechoslovakia was certainly accepting, accept, the, the, the philosophy was to accept everybody. And uh, it, it was a fairly open society, accepting, accepting everything. I'm just saying that personally, there was no, I cannot remember a single instance of uh, racial hatred. This was uh, just, it, that was before the, the headline you know, the, the headline uprising and all that, uh, before the rubble rousing of the, head, of the German people uh, in, in the Czech part of the Sudetenland, in the Czechoslovakia. Yeah. <coughs> Just... How, how big was the Jewish community? What, what percentage of the population? Oh, maybe 5 percent, 10 percent, maybe maximum. <coughs> well, but I went through Czech schools. Uh, I was not very, uh, not a very good scholar. Uh, I um, 
went to the, through the five years of the grammar school, missing year and a half when I was very, very ill. But I had a private tutoring, so um, I kept up more or less with it, with the schooling, and uh, I uh, <coughs> persevered. And finally, um, my parents put me into Pilsen to a, to a high school, to a, a um, what is seven-year high schools. Uh, if uh, many people know it as a gymnasium. Uh, I was a very, very bad student. I was, uh, my mother was called into school after three years and told, was told that I have to leave the school because I just don't have time. I just don't study. I don't keep up with the lecture. The only thing I had a, a pass, a very good passing grade was out of physics. But everything else, I just failed miserably. My mother cried and begged that they would give me a passing grade in everything. They finally agreed on a promise that I would never, but never, go to another school again. So, she promised. I kept her promise during the English years, uh, later on, until I was 21. Um, the Germans, in the meantime, were revolting in and, uh, and, uh, Sudetenland, and they took over Sudetenland, which meant my parents had to leave their home, the, their factory, uh, and uh, the livelihood. Uh, they moved to, uh, we had an apartment house in Prague, and one of the apartments we kept for visiting Prague, so uh, they moved there. To that little apartment, and uh, I don't quite know how they got hold of, or how they got to know Mr. Winton, Nicholas Winton, who arranged the trains, the children transports, from Prague to England. I really have no idea. We never talked about it. But when I finally when they threw me out of school, in effect, I went. I lived in Prague with my parents. It uh, was a very pleasant time. It was th early 38, 39, and uh, I have good memories of, you know, just roaming around Prague, roaming around the t near the river, and. Uh, and going to on boating trips and things like that, but uh, that was through my throughout my youth there, and so uh, it uh, finally the the trans the children's transport contacted my parents because they registered me and decided that we could go I could go on a second on a, a July train from Prague to London. Um, my cousin wanted to come too because he was nearly always with us. He didn't like his parents very much. Uh, he, but um, he um, joined me and um, we registered to go to England. Interestingly enough, people ask me, well, uh, especially English people, want to know how come I went to England without a visa. Well, my passport, my Czech passport was noted as uh, entrance to England granted visaless. So I guess I didn't have a visa, even though everyone my parents couldn't ever just go to England because they, they would need a visa. So, and um, so um, at this point, in, uh, in, in July of 31, uh, in um, spring of, uh, spring, May, May 15th, matter of fact, um, the Germans invaded Czechoslovakia completely. And that kind of solidified my parents desire to, to send me to England. I don't know how they managed that as parents. 
I often think about it. It's just, how can a mother send a child, their baby child, baby boy, I mean, they had Peter, my two-year older brother, but he was already growing up. I was a, still a 15-year-old, 14-year-old, and uh, I was very, very sick in my youth. They nursed me back to health. I was a, a, a wonder child, actually, because of that. And um, I was spoiled, spoiled rotten. Well, it, uh, interestingly enough, um, they did it. I don't know how. I, I don't think I could do it with my children. But uh, it, uh, they, my father, I think, was very, very realistic because he applied for an American visa in 1935. Now, in 1935, who ever thought of war? It's just impossible to think of that in 1935 somebody would apply for a visa for, to immigrate from their home, which was still in Prague, I mean in Stab, next to the factory, in our old home, and he went to Prague to apply for a visa. Um, of course, the story is that he was in pra Prague uh, sipping coffee in a cafe, uh, a friend of his stopped by and said, well, hi, and I started talking. And um, the friend said, you know, I'm going to the American embassy to apply for a visa just in case something happens so we can emigrate. And my father said, oh, um, they said, Vicky, Vicky, my father's name was Vickle, or Vicky. Vicky, would you like to come along and apply too? But he said, well, maybe. No, no, no. I don't think I'll have time, my father said. He said, well, the friend of his said, well, it's a very beautiful secretary there. And knowing my father, that would have done it. So um, he went to the American embassy with, his, with a friend and applied for a visa, which came through, by the way, jumping a little ahead, in 1940. Now, 1940, the war was already on. They were able to leave Prague in 1940 and go to America. Without me, of course, because I was already in England. The, the train was fun. I, uh, on the train, I, I just considered it as a complete lark. I was so... Uh, Blase. It was com I was completely blasé about this trip to England. I mean, I, I didn't object. I, I think it's going to be fun to see England. And uh, I knew I'm not going to be there very long because my parents will come and get me. Well, the war started uh, shortly afterwards. Uh, uh, my, my train was, by the way, my train was the last before one. And there was one other train after me that le well, left Prague for England, but no more. So that was 1939 when the war started. And um, I... Uh, I came to England, I studied a little um, brochure on a train, a, a children's, bro a children's newspaper. They had a little brochure there, learn English. So I studied English out of a little paragraph and I thought it was very funny because I, there's one word I learned and I never understood why, how the, anybody could use that word, Nefspapper. Perhaps English people have trouble r realizing what it means. It's newspaper. 
Uh, if a Czech reads the word newspaper, it's nefs paper, because you pronounce every syllable in um, in the Czech language. Uh, it didn't help me very much, but uh, it was okay. G gave me a feeling for English. Um, I arrived in England uh, because I was already 15. Um, they um, a <coughs> little over 15 actually, and um, the the refugee organization didn't have a family for me to to pick me up and uh, take care of me, so I was put in, into a children's camp in, in a refugee camp. I learned quite a bit in the camp, mm -hmm. in the refugee camp, and uh, from then on I had to work and uh, the food in the camp was provided by a, uh, a uh, dining room by the, co by the uh, refugee organization and then I was put out in uh, uh, bed and breakfast places. In, and while working outside. Yeah. Out of that refugee camp, my first job was picking strawberries in a field. And uh, I, as a well brought up boy, I reported to my, for my work in, beautiful, in my best coat and a shirt and a tie. Um, they, of course, people laughed about that, but uh, that's how I was brought up. You go to a job, you go you know, very well dressed up. Um, they gave me a pair of overalls and uh, sent me out into the field. So I learned how to pick strawberries. It's a good job to know, in case. Um, then I was um, sent to, a, uh, to Northampton. Um, I don't know if you ever seen pictures, anyone seen pictures of these uh, streets in English towns where one house is exactly the same as the other except that two of them back, back to back. So there are two uh, walkways into the front door like this and then uh, you have to know where you are. Well, I was at 101. Uh, yeah, I don't remember the street anymore. It's too bad. I used to, yeah. but then it really doesn't matter. Um, my first job there, I was um, hired as a uh, uh, in the iron foundry, and I g was grinding co uh, gas tight covers to fit onto a frame for the Maginot line. Those covers were so heavy, I just couldn't lift them. And, um, but it, it was a very dirty job, probably extremely unhealthy, because, uh, but it had to be done. So, um, and uh, after a while, I just couldn't do it anymore. I was just, the grime, the, 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 the grinding of the metal, of the steel, uh, created a, a, uh, just a huge amount of dust and um, I had to continually take showers. Um, then they sent me to an iron foundry, uh, to, excuse me, to, to a um, um, <coughs> leather factory where I was um, pressing those uh, um, uh, cow skins, uh, complete skins, just putting it over a, a board and uh, pressing a and starting a machine that pressed it. And for a uh, yeah, little boy like me, it was again very heavy labor. And so, uh, but I, it was a fairly steady job. So I managed uh, to live. I paid my rent to the l landlady and I had one room in that little house which just went whenever I could I, I can I could find it easily it was easy to it was something which I still remember 
So then uh, a family in Leicester was looking for their three boys and um, they all, the, the, all except one who was uh, in reserved occupation, uh, the, they, but they served in the military. Um, so they were all alone, that's a pair, um, about my parents' age. They um, took me, they asked for a boy to take care of, and they selected me. And I went in for a, with an interview with them, and we just clicked. Seems to work. So I moved to a little town near Leicester, England, the Midlands. And uh, the youngest son of that family was a, a movie operator at the movie house in uh, that little town of Oldby. And uh, I took over his job when he, le when he left for the, he went to the Air Force. I became a movie projectionist and went very quickly up in the ranks uh, because um, um, every boy, all the other boys were being called out, so I was one of the, the only one that was fairly safe for a while. And um, so I um, was a movie projectionist until I was 21. When I came close to 21, I decided that my parents, my parents were in the meantime already in America. That I won't be able to join them because they were able, so far they were able to claim me as a dependent until I was 21. Um, so I uh, decided to join the Royal Air Force. I was accepted for flight, flight crew training. I had a, on the label I had Czechoslovakia. And um, it was very, very comfortable. I, I, I was called up in, um, just as soon as I was 21. I, I joined, I, I registered for for Royal Air Force uh, just before I was 21. They called me up. I went through a, tra a basic training. I went, um, but uh, even though I was selected for a flight crew and I walked around with a little white piece of uh, cloth stuck into the inner cup, just sticking out a little bit, which designated me as a ground, ground crew, a ground, a, a flight crew uh, <coughs> volunteer. Uh, I was never called for flight crew, so I, uh, start, I uh, was selected for communications because I like radios and things, but I became a teletype operator, which meant typing, typing signals, typing this, typing that. And most of it in code, of course, I had no idea what I was typing. And um, that was the beginning of the teleprinter, uh, which is a, a teleprinter is an American name for uh, English teletype. Don't know why they have two different names, but there you are. Um, and um, shortly after that, I was uh, sent to India. I often wondered why I was sent to India, because the, the, I could have been much more used in the European area uh, when they decided to invade. But um, I um, made... Um, <coughs> but India was just fine. Um, I uh, must admit that I as I pointed out in my memoirs, in the Golden Age memoirs, uh, the British Raj was very, very uh, firm in me. I uh, just couldn't make fr India friends of any Indians. They were total, 
dirt under my feet uh, to my shame. But I changed afterwards. I traveled through India on trains uh, and uh, I went to Ceylon and when I um, in Ceylon um, again I was, a tele uh, I was uh, running a teletype system and um, then um, I uh, also under my charge was a, a beautiful radio station um, so um, my lifelong dream of being in radio was realized there. Um, <coughs> I, um, the war ended when I was in Ceylon. I knew my parents were still uh, in America. I um, found out that the Royal Air Force um, Command issued a info, some information about foreigners serving in the Royal Air Force and they said they can be repatriated to their home uh, or to any part of the any part of the world they would like to go to. So I opted to be repatriated to America. Of course, the word repatriation is a little silly here, yeah, but uh, my parents were there. So it's, um, I was uh, selected and uh, the British forces in their wisdom, as soon as I was, they said yes, you can, you, uh, we'll try and get your visa and all that. Uh, and um, as soon as they said that, they sent me to England, back to England from from Ceylon. With um, I mean, most of my friends were still in Engl in uh, India, but they sent me back. They sent me to a, a little a camp near near um, in the Midlands uh, called Coventry. Bletchley, excuse me, Coventry was something else. Uh, uh, Bletchley. Uh, Bletchley was, um, after the war, became famous for code breaking. And even though I spent all my, the rest of my Air Force time in Bletchley, walking around, talking to people, I had absolutely no idea what was going on in that code breaking system. It was so secret, uh, nobody ever talked about it. And um, <coughs> made very good friends there, uh, even though, and um, after, after a couple of years, yeah, it took about two years for the visa to come through. I got permission to go to America, to be repatriated to America. They immediately demobilized me, but not completely, because I was still in the Royal Air Force when I, um, all throughout the trip, 